I'll start. <laughs> All right, and we are officially live. Hi, everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the September Chemnitz Dialogue Live. Uh, each month, I pick a new inspiration photo to draw a color palette from, and then I come on the live stream to dye some yarn inspired that, to that photo while hanging out with all of you. Since this is a dialogue, I invite all of you to participate at home using these using this same inspiration photo sorry <laughs> oh i need to silence my phone um so using the same inspiration photo that i am using and you could draw from it the colors or you could be like take it literally you could take it abstractly um, i like to sometimes pull like a technique from the photo as well. Like for example, I really like these blocks of color on this mandarin duck that I have selected for this month. Um, uh -huh, moving that up. And uh, yeah, if you want me to feature your photos in the recap for this live stream sometime in early to mid-October, then share your pictures with me. Use the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram and you can also reply to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. Uh, you can find that photo, and I still need to put a link to that in the video description. If I don't, please remind me. But you can also find that photo. I have an album for Chemnitz Dialogue, which will have all the inspiration photos in there. Um, and it's an easy way to find it. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys are all doing really well this evening. Uh, and yes, I was doing the happy dance to test the stream quality, which hopefully it is still doing okay. Um, yeah, fingers crossed that like whatever issues we were having are the water under uh, a bridge. Um, but yes, I was doing my little happy dance. Um, let's see, swapping that over to live chat so I can see everything. Yeah, the duck. It's fun. what's fun is that sometimes there's colors like in nature or colors you see from a photograph that I wouldn't necessarily immediately pull together. But when you look at it in say this duck or uh, you know in, in flowers or something, it just works. Um, and so it's really really fun. Um, oh yeah, that white streak in the water is cool too. I hadn't uh, hadn't noticed that. I was looking more at the duck itself, but I mean. Obviously, I think, and I, I make this guy bigger just for a little bit, I plan to focus mostly on the duck. However, you could focus on the water and pull those neutrals. You don't have to focus on the duck or incorporate any colors to be featured. Um, I just enjoy getting a chance to share your photos and show how like so many of us are, can be inspired by one photo, but pull different elements. But one of the things that really has struck me in addition to just the bird and the beautiful reflection here. Um, those black and white stripes were near the breast of the bird. I was gonna point, but then like, yeah, that doesn't work, quite work. Um, near the breast of the bird, there's that sort of a little bit of a purple color, and then there's white, black, white, black. And so that is one less abstract element from this photo that I want to try to capture in the yarn. Now, the technique I'm planning to use today, um, well, I guess I'm gonna remake the photo smaller. Uh, the technique I'm planning to use today is hand painting. Um, I wanna hand paint on the countertop to sort of precisely apply color. Now, if I wanted to more precisely apply color to the yarn, then I might want to use guar gum or some kind of thickener to mix in with my dyes, which would allow me to really get that precise color placement. This is something I like to do like when I'm doing stenciling and things like that. However, uh, I did not end up mixing up any guar gum, so therefore that's not what I'm gonna be doing. But if I really wanted to get this white, black, white, black really precise without sort of fuzzy lines at the edge, um, then guar gum would be come in really handy um, because it would prevent the colors from spreading. Uh, I 
Yeah, but also it's a bird and feathers have that softness and the feathered edge. I don't mind also having colors spread a little bit. Uh, so I've been going like back and forth on that, but you never know. Um, there's many, many ways that one could die, but those are sort of the elements that have um, popped out to me um, at first. Uh, hi, Amy, not much yet, uh, just sort of going through. So on my countertop, you can see I have some color swatches. Um, I was playing around with crayons and I was just looking at this bird and trying to pull some of the colors that I saw uh, just to sort of help me narrow down what I wanted to do. So you could do a colorway from this and you could do just like black, a blue, sort of a, a rusty, a rust color and maybe like a hint of the purple and that would like be a way to sort of like narrow everything down and not be as literal and try to pull all of the colors. But I like to, we're going to mix a lot of colors and then step back and sort of see where this takes us. Now, as for the actual dyeing project itself, I put up a poll in the Chemist Lab Facebook group, which of course then when I checked in and grabbed stuff to pre-soak, then it, the results changed again. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to start off hand painting and I'm going to do something that I'm not sure I have exactly done. Um, I don't know if I have dyed Wool of the Andes Roving side by side with Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. Um, so when you hand paint a yarn and a roving, and I'm not going to be doing like identical side by side a la, uh, I think it was like Dyebot Weekly 35 when I took two yarn bases and added the exact same amount of dye to each one. but. Ultimately, I think it'll be interesting to see how, you know, dying at the same time with approximately the same amount of color, how they might look differently um, towards the end um, once they're dry. Um, a lot of times things will look really, really similar when wet, but you really see those differences once things dry. Um, yes, the, the white stripes and the blue on the head as well. Um, yeah, and so the it's but I, I was looking for our colored pencils, but I couldn't find them because I think colored pencils are a little better for mixing colors on paper than crayons because you sort of layer the wax on top of it. Um, there were a couple colors I couldn't quite find, so I like took I mixed some of the crayon colors. I do have some dyes, some pre-mixed dyes that probably would match a lot of these colors spot on, but uh, I didn't make new soft solutions of those colors. In theory, I could always go do that. However, I think I have enough colors in stock solution that I could use to mix these colors, um, or at least a couple of these colors. I don't think I'd be able to get the brightest blue. Um, I think I would want like a frozen or Caribbean blue or something to sort of hit that tone. I don't think, I forget what blue I might have. Actually, it could get kind of close. It might not feel as bright though. Uh, I think I might have like brilliant blue from Jacquard down here. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll see, and we're gonna just play with mixing and see sort of where where we end up. Um, are the stripes black or navy blue? Uh, zooming in, can I make it even bigger? I think it depends where on the bird you're looking. I think at the breast they are black. But then on the wing, that is sort of like a, almost a blue steel kind of color. Um, sorry, got to now shrink this again. <laughs> uh oh, oh no, okay. It's a lot easier to make it bigger than it is to make it smaller. Cause like if it gets out of frame. <laughs> um, oh dear. But yeah, so that is the sort of the reference photo, which I will need to keep pulling up over the course of this. But if you want to see my swatches side by side, um, follow me on Instagram. Um, and I have, I added some stuff to my stories about the color selection. Um, so you had a, so you weighed your wool, the roving out of the package and it was 96 grams. Um, 
So with with any like yarn and um, and fiber and whatnot, I think the industry standard is like a five percent difference um, around like the hundred gram mark because moisture in the air and whatnot can affect. I think to an extent can affect the weight maybe, and eh, that doesn't entirely make sense. But either way, there is like a bit of a the the standard. I think it's like plus or minus ten percent. So I've had. I haven't weighed the rovings that I have in a while, but I, in general, the yarn that I've gotten from Knit Picks tends to lean slightly over for me. Occasionally I have things that are under, um, but I always sort of, if I'm, yeah, if I'm worried about yardage, then I like plan for it to be a little under. The only time I complained was one time I had one that was like, I think the industry standard is 10%, but like for me, I, in my head, I'm comfortable, comfortable. I'm not furious if it's like plus or minus five grams. If it's more than that, then I usually will reach, like I would reach out. But I only think I've once had something be like 90 grams when it was supposed to be 100. Um, and then they sent me a whole nother skein. Um, no, I don't think the picture is snowing. I think that it's just on a river or something. I think it's just like light spots or something. Um, so anyway, long-winded way that if um, your scale might not be off, um, it just might be like there's there's some error when it comes to splitting fiber. Um, and I believe that like an acceptable, I forget if an acceptable number is like two knots a skein is like, I, I, I forget, I looked this up at one point because I was curious. There's some number where it's like acceptable that you could technically have two joins in a skein and more than that would like not meet the quality standards of something. So I, but I don't remember for sure. Um, oh, Veronica, Ronnie, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. If any of you are wondering about that bright, beautiful orange box pop that popped up, that's a super chat. There's a little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat and think of it sort of like a tip jar. <laughs> Uh, for these streams. So thank you so much. And hopefully I did not just go jerky. Uh, okay, that seems to be fine. There's like my CPU. Uh, okay, we're gonna try. Hopefully things will go smoothly. Oh, no, no, I noticed I got jerky. And my mouth is still moving. Although I'm staying in insane land naturally still. Um, Whew, okay, uh, oh, <laughs> guys, the Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Oh no, I am jerky. Um, um, yeah, okay, uh, this is what's going to happen. Okay, I have closed that window. Um, so I now no longer can see the preview. I'm going to see if that makes a difference. If not, I will close the chat and I'm going to pull up the chat. Oh, that did make a difference. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull it up because I know I no longer can see like what's live. Um, I need to find myself on YouTube. Chemnitz. Okay, here we go. Okay. So this way I can now see myself and see what's coming through. Um, but the other thing, the sound is fine. It was just, it, oh, that is not what I wanted to share. Shoot, I want the, um, okay. Anyway, uh, it's in the iCard. If someone else wants to pop a link for this in the chat, that would be, oh no, no one else can pop links in chat. Never mind. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to say is that the Chemnitz Hanukkah sampler is now available for pre-order. Uh, many of you in the chat have already snagged a slot, but basically what this is, it um, is, <laughs> wow, that was a sentence. Uh, in around Hanukkah, which starts on December 22nd this year, I will be releasing a brand new video every night, eight nights of Hanukkah. There will be at least eight videos in the series. And for each night, there will be a mini skein that you can unwrap at home while you watch the video. And it's a lot of fun. There's many options, fingering and DK. 
There's bonus games you can add on, and you can find all of that in the Kenneth Creations Etsy shop. Um, and so there is, there should be a link in the iCard that's going to be up in that top corner, uh, the top right corner. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, you can learn more information there in my Etsy shop. Um, so, ooh. cool, that seems to be working. All right, I'm going to say goodbye to the ducky and goodbye to my head. Uh, okay. Woohoo! Yeah, this, the Hanukkah samplers are a lot of fun. I have a ton of fun filming this. Um, and I just realized, like, I've got my phone, and I was, like, looking, maybe, so I've got the live stream on right now, but maybe instead I want to pull up the duck. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I want to have that on hand. Where is my, nope. Okay. I want the duck. And da, da, da. okay, so here are sort of the colors that I started with. And I think I think I'm sort of the most excited and the ones that I really want to try to hit. I mean, I'd love to get that blue as well, but I think I want this sort of that darker blue. It's in the center of the head versus the brighter one. Um, I want a rust color. I want, I want to try to get that pink and then black. So the black, that's easy. Um, hopefully I will have enough. I've got the 1% stock solution of Dharma True Black. Um, it's a great black and it does not break for me. Um, which means that I don't see it separating into multiple different colors, which is one reason why I like it. Now, that is maybe the one color that I might dye directly from the 1% stock solution. Some of the other colors I might want to dilute a bit more first. And this proportion is always something, and you can't see me just right, that is like a little bit uh, finicky for me. Because if you go too pale, then, like, if you go if you go too, too light, then, yeah, it, it's not great. Um, but, because at some extent with hand painting, like, in theory, you can always add more dye. And so you could steam set and then add more color. But at some point, you can't necessarily add more water. Um, so that is definitely a concern. Um... Oh, okay, so I saw like a pixelated thing and it cleared up. Yeah, I think that the um, settings went, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, someone asked, hey, remember when you got all the Jacquard dyes for free room dyer supplier? Um, yes, so that is coming, uh, but it's not up to me when that gets announced. Um, <laughs> I'm still waiting for all the final details as well, and that is all ongoing. But yes, Jakar, or uh, Dyer Supplier did send me a complete collection of Dharma Acid dyes. And there are affiliate links in the video description for, I guess, a number of different, um, for Amazon and Nitpicks and Dyer Supplier. And if you purchase anything through those links, I will earn a commission. Um, that's what that means. Where is my measuring cup? Uh, I guess I could just use you. It's not very precise, though. Okay. Color mixing isn't always about precision. The only time when it's important to, and maybe I want to get a diary for this reason, the only time it's important to worry about color mixing and your proportions is in case you need to mix more of that color. And that's why I'm getting my diary. Uh, 
Uh, okay. I don't want to show you guys my Hanukkah spoilers. <laughs> uh, I'm not even using my like official like Zazzle diary either. I'm still trying to use up this old notebook and then I'm going to transition into one of the like the leave no die behind diary things. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So let's have to get settings. I was like looking through. Um, okay, I was printing this out. Okay, I think, well, okay, a quarter cup is like 60 milliliters. And I feel like that that is going to be too much. Oh, no, that's about like, I don't know if you can see how far the bottle is full. So I'm going to go ahead and add about a quarter cup of water to each of these jars. I am pre-soaking all of the fiber with vinegar, so I'm not adding vinegar to my dyes. Uh, some people like to add acid to their dyes, and I think that ultimately that comes down to a lot of personal preference. But one reason why I like to not do that is that if I have leftover dyes, then I can um, use it for something something else. All right, so write this down. I don't know why it's faster to write H2O than it is to write water. Okay, ducky duck, inspire me. Um, Yeah, my upload speed definitely did. Oh no, did it slow down again? Oh no, it seems to be. I can no longer check my stream health because I closed that window, but I wanted to leave the chat up so I could see it. But I've noticed a correlation between like my CPU spiking and the stream health. Um, okay. Um, okay, so let's start with the blue. And so, yeah, I've got some Brilliant Blue from Jacquard, and I'm going to grab a paper towel and just to show, actually, while I'm doing this, I should put up the image. Oh, no, that's camera, image. There we go. Hi, Ducky. I'm good? Okay. So, here is... I know the duck isn't completely on screen, but yeah, this color actually is pretty good. Um, keep trying to fingerprint back into my phone. Oh goodness. Okay, so let's go ahead and just dilute this by one. I may regret that, but so I've got a quarter cup of the brilliant blue dye. And how I managed to not spill that everywhere, I do not know. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to rinse it out, and I'll probably be saving some of this, like, dye random dye mixture. Okay. So a quarter cup of dye is uh, 60, about 60 milliliters, which is, um, would be about a 0.6 DOS if I was dealing with 100 grams. But of course, we're not, we're dealing with um, 200 grams. But still, like if you, it's just sort of helpful to think about 
um, how much of the color that you want to add. And so if I wanted this color to spread out more on, on our fiber, so if I wanted the color to spread out more, then I would dilute it more just so, or make more of the volume, because in general, volume doesn't necessarily matter, but the more concentrated your dye is when you're hand painting, the further the color will spread, so the more pigmented it'll be where you place it. Um, because you're not necessarily adding everything in the bottles that you mix. So one to one, glue to water. Okay, and so for, where is, so I've got sand dune. If I wanted to do sort of that um, taupey color, but I think I wanna deal with some fawn. So I think what I'm gonna do, let's check the color of fawn. Yeah, so fawn is a nice warm brown. It's definitely not like a rust orange. So we're gonna do this slow and then we'll add more color. But let's do one tablespoon of fawn. This is gonna be slow, I should have taken the cap off. Oh yeah. Okay, so we've got one tablespoon of fawn, and then I want less than a tablespoon. I want two spoons. Everything is all over right now. Aha. Okay, what are you? Oh, a quarter teaspoon? That's likely too small, but let's go with it. Um, so let's add a quarter teaspoon of brilliant yellow. Probably not nearly enough. And then please tell me I brought, I did not. I might regret that. Okay, I need to go find my red. But since um, I don't have my red yet, because I didn't bring it down for some odd reason, let's just mix that up and see what our yellow added to our brown did. Yeah, I want some red in there. Um, don't forget this is also much more dilute. Actually, this is looking sort of like that even one, but I sort of want to get to more of that rust. So, so far, let's see, I did uh, one T fawn, uh, yellow. I definitely have a red upstairs. I'll be right back, guys. guys I'm back thank you for your patience um, this is a mandarin duck and I know it's not completely on screen I don't want to block too much um okay so now I want to add to this brown and I'm not worried about the intensity as of yet I'm more oh dear focused on the um let me go somewhere I'm less focused on the intensity and more on the proportion right now. So I can always double the amount of dye 
that I am adding. Okay, so this is Jacquard Fire Red. And I just added a teaspoon of that. Whoa, look at that color in the bottle. Um, we'll see how we are. Okay, please do not squirt on me. There we go. Okay, that's moving in the direction um, that I want it to go in. So I'm going to add, oh dear, another quarter, quarter teaspoon. It's looking like very uh, bloody in here. Okay, so we're up to a half teaspoon of our red. So a lot of these bottles I'm using are either from Dharma Training Company or, oh dear, they're either from Dharma Training Company or they are um, old tulip tie-dye ones, which I like to save. Okay, please, please, please do not, there we go, spit on me and That's pretty good. I like that color. It's a very like brick sort of color. Okay, and so I wanna now, um, I think I wanna intensify it a little bit. Okay, so to this one, uh, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and double double the amount of dye that's in here. So, one, two, Three. It's way easier to not mix directly into squeeze bottles. Um, just going to throw that out there. And then I've got my color fawn, which is one tablespoon. Okay, and let's see where we are. We are mm, about half full. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm tripling the recipe of dye and then I'm going to add some more water. But I'm going to only I'm not going to add another full quarter cup. And so when you're dealing with recipes, this is where it's handy to have your stock solutions on properly mixed. I like what's happening on my uh, little thing right here. Uh oh. Okay, chat, did I add fawn for a third time already? <laughs> Please let me know. <laughs> I suppose, like, I could check the, like, hue. Oh, my gosh. That would be, uh... I think so. Uh, I 
did add it already? Okay, thank you. It looks, I was like, this looks like I did. Okay, and so now I'm gonna add, um, I'm actually on that test. So like when I'm testing here on like the dark color, like the total, the, the actual hue that I will see, like the depth of the color that I see on the yarn won't be exactly what I see on here, but it's sort of like a, a brief little gauge. So I'm gonna add one, two tablespoons of water. And that also sort of clears these out for some of the next colors. All right, so we've got like a, a blue, it's a bright blue, we've got a rust, we've got black. Um, I actually have, I'm curious, I've got some sand dune. Um, shoot, I almost should grab the ecru. The sand dune isn't bad if I end up wanting some brown. I'm just going to leave that. Um, I could dilute that, I suppose, if I end up wanting to. Um, okay, fawn, you are done. Uh, red, I might need you again. Okay. Now we need to do the like pinkish purple color. And oh, so it's sort of, I need to pull this up. I'm gonna have to swap gloves. I'm getting sweaty and I'm probably gonna do it. I try to reuse gloves as much as possible, but it's a little harder when I'm live. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my, um, Yeah, so it's somewhere in between. I mean, there's elements. Okay, where where are you guys? Da, 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 da. There's elements of red in there too, but I really want like a nice reddish purple. So I think I think what I'm gonna do. Did I bring any? Of the color I'm thinking of. I think I might not have any. Um, so I've got navy, which actually is not a horrible choice. Oh, I do have gunmetal. Okay. Because I want to live dangerously. <laughs> oh man, I'm going to totally run out of dye, guys. I think there's going to be a lot of white in here. Oh goodness. Okay, so gunmetal. Oh, gunmetal is very much navy. Um, but then I have a, some like bright fluorescent fuchsia. So what if I did? Let's just see. I can always take this color back. We're going to try. might be too much of the gunmetal, but I love this color. So, although actually navy probably would have been a better choice to start with. Um, so I find gunmetal to be more blue and navy um, from Dharma tends to, oh, that's the color I mixed. Navy tends to be a bit more, um, what's the word? Uh, purple, like, Barely. So I guess, I don't know if you guys can see, we, it's not super zoomed in, but here is some dark navy. Um, so this is gunmetal that is dark navy. The dark navy has more purple in it, which probably would have been better to start with, but you know. Okay. I was thinking pink, but I have so little of the pink. Let's go for some red. And then we can always take 
You can always take a mixture that you made and take a portion of that and mix with something else. Oh, and I need to write down plus two T water. Because right now we've got one T gunmetal, one T red, and lid. And still mixing colors. This is why like sometimes it's easier if I'm just like, okay, these are the colors I'm gonna use. But it is fun to try to mix things up. It might be, I'm curious, I don't know if I mix these one to one. I can't remember the Dye Pop PS video I just shared. I don't remember uh, what colors I mixed together. Okay, I have a dot of this on my finger. That's not bad. Let me do a proper. That's not bad. That is really, really close to what I was going for. I think I just might, ooh, it might need a little blue. Um, it might be a little too burgundy. So let's add, it's, it's a little too pigmented too. I think I want it lighter. So I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of blue. Color mixing is not something I consider to be a strong suit of mine, um, but I just sort of do it by feel. Okay, so that was a half teaspoon of blue, and I'm gonna add one, two tablespoons of water. See where we are, and we can start over if we need to. My little like swatch guy is over here is getting um, a little slightly bluer. I, I like that. I like that purple. The thing I'm not necessarily as big a fan of anymore is uh, my blue. So, but we'll, we'll chuck these colors that we have next to each other on a fresh paper towel in a moment. Um, okay. But my favorite towel. Okay. So the colors that we have mixed so far, we've got. We've got a rusty orange. We've got a deep purple. Got sort of a tan. I think I might want the ecru though. Shoot, I don't have a ton of that. I don't know what, mm -hmm. got black. got the blue. Actually, I'm not mad at this. And I think the sand dune coming in there, up oh, there, there, there. All right. Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. There, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think of those colors. And yeah. Let me see if I can see it on, like, over to YouTube for the delay. Um, actually, and white will be a part of it, too. I kind of like that. I'm not mad. I wish, I sort of wish I had a brighter orange. 
as well, but I think that it's kind of okay, and I like those colors together a lot. Um, you guys like it? All right, I, I'm not going to second death guess myself, and we are going to go for this, but um, huh, this is pretty. Okay, I got to take a picture right now. Um, <laughs> you know, I because I, I tend to go for so many colors so often. Okay, I'm going to post this like this which you guys can't see. I'm going to post it on my Instagram stories right now, so that way um, you guys can go see. Uh, okay. I posted that to my stories right now. Um, and, yeah, now let's start setting up for our fiber and for our dyeing. And all of you guys, oh, are full of water. Oh, dear. I am not going to make a mess. I am not going to make a mess. I am totally going to make a mess. <laughs> so I guess while I am setting things up and moving things around, this is as good of a time as any to remind you guys to press that like button. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel. And if you really enjoy my content, um, you might want to consider either becoming a Chemnitz patron or um, pre-ordering a Chemnitz Hanukkah sampler. Um, so that way you can get a sampler of yarn that I've dyed and unwrap them while watching videos. Um, and I will add that um, I'm inviting everyone to celebrate Hanukkah with me, so you do not need to be Jewish uh, to participate. Um, but I am Jewish, so that's why I do Hanukkah <laughs> versus like an advent or something. Not that, I mean, I love the idea of someday doing an advent calendar. There is no way I could do that many videos. Um, oh man, I think like it would be, yeah, it would, uh, I would struggle to like do the production level of that. Okay, so I don't love, okay, duck, you're going to say goodbye for a bit. And actually, I'm going to sit down and hang out with the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so I don't love using plastic wrap. However, I don't have a great alternative when I'm hand painting and I want to keep the colors separate. If I'm doing something more random on the counter, I will just place something directly in the steamer basket and not use plastic wrap. Um, and even if I'm using food safe dyes and I want to microwave something, I'll do the same thing, put it in a bowl and a silicone lid that I can rewash. So I am trying to reduce plastic waste overall. Um, but you know, there are times when I just don't have like a silk, like something that is washable, that is large enough to use for something like this. Um, so, yeah, it, I did well with the crayon swatch. I'm really proud. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yes, um, I also see that, like, teal uh, or turquoise kind of color near the tip of the head. And um, I wanted to mix a frozen, and I didn't have a chance. But I think... If I was going to go beyond sort of these five colors and six, if you include the white that I mixed, then um, then I would probably really want that color. That would be one in there. And same with like a brighter orange. But I think I'm going to stick with these five and not try to overcomplicate it. Um, so this is going to show my uh, ignorance. But when do the 12 days of Christmas begin? Do they begin on Christmas or are they like the 12 days leading up? Uh, that is something that, so we are a multi-faith family, so I celebrate Christmas like with my husband and his family. Um, but yeah, I, I am still not very uh, knowledgeable <laughs> when it comes to that. Okay, I'm going to stand back up. <laughs> okay, let's bring over the fiber, which has been pre-soaking for a while. Um...
So I have a feeling I will not have, oh my gosh, it took me almost an hour to mix the colors, okay. Um, actually, I'm debating putting this, nah, I was debating putting this through my spin dryer, but then I decided not to. Um, don't worry, I will sh adjust the camera to make sure everything's in frame. I can't actually see right now, but once I have the fiber over, I'll deal with it. Um, for those of you just tuning in, uh, today I am going to dye 100 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Robing next to 100 grams of the Wool of the Andes uh, Worsted Weight Yarn. Did I say Robing? Wool of the Andes Robing. All of, so all of this is the exact same fiber content. Um, it's all 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And I pre-soaked them together. So, oh, but I didn't necessarily make sure it was untwisted. Do -do. So, yeah, but I thought that this would be fun. There's definitely like some twist in here. Oh well. Actually, it's fairly compact. These actually look similarly sized. I'm not mad at that, but I'm going to move it closer to the camera. And I will shift the camera, don't worry. Um, I can't even see chat right now, but uh, I can feel myself wanting to do that. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Um, uh, so 12 days of Christmas starts on Christmas and goes until after New Year's. Um, <laughs> Butcher paper for the steamer, but wouldn't the the water of the excess dye would soak through the butcher paper? I would think. Uh, where is the camera? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, gee, here we go. Get your video camera. Let's zoom out, and I need to pan. All right, you're going to be seeing a bit of my belly, but there we go. Um, so my concern with wax paper is transferring wax to the yarn. Um, parchment paper is silicone. Really? Let's say what it is kind of used because I've definitely had parchment paper like I suppose it has it has something on it but I've definitely had it like crisp non-stick oven safe I have no idea what it is and you're not going to tell me are you I have no idea what it is interesting I wonder if my materials, ah, now, now I don't have the bird on there so I can show closer, even though I posted this on Instagram. So these were the colors that I was initially drawn to when looking at my, um, uh, looking at the image earlier today. And then these are the five colors that we've pulled to play with. Uh, three of them, well, I guess technically I only really mixed those two. This is just the blue. <laughs> I haven't added anything to that uh, in the black and sand dunes. So I mixed two, but it took me the better part of an hour. <laughs> oh man, there's some videos coming up where I do some color mixing and like, it's so hard for me to feel satisfied. I always want to like keep tweaking. And so, and then it's such a pain to edit around them. <laughs> oh man. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So then I'll have to try it. I guess I assumed the parchment paper would get wet, but you never know. All right. So in terms of the, mm, let me look at the bird. Birdie, where are you? No, 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 no. Okay, I guess that's fine. Okay, let's move you back in frame. Make you big. 
Hello, our friend bird. Okay. So if I do, okay, I think I might want to do Hopefully this isn't fun. Okay, I think I might want to do tan rust, then black, white, black, white. I'm going to start with the black and the white because that's the part that like I'm the most drawn to. Hopefully I don't run out. Um, <laughs> uh, and then the blue and the purple on the other side. So that's sort of my plan. Um, yeah, I've used wax paper to like heat transfer stuff. Okay. Okay. Guys, let's go for it. Okay, so this is a straight, let's start on the yarn. 1%, and you can see how just this one line that I'm drawing, see how much that's spread out? Uh, that's because there's no guar gum and oh roving hello let's there might end up being more dye go in the roving i'm now as i am dotting this sort of dotting and pressing i'm going to do that on the yarn as well which should hopefully give us some decent color penetration towards the other side. Okay. Let's see how it is. Oh, that's not bad. I always want to just make sure there's enough dye so I could flip it back over. Probably did not, probably started that, I should have, it's fine. I can add other, it's fine. Rebecca, you're reading too much into this. Okay, black. The hole on this thing is tiny. It's evidenced by it's now like also clogged, probably because I'm doing this. I, need, I might need to like pin prick it. Probably should have transferred this. I don't think I've tried like hand painting with this bottle directly. So I know that there, the white is bigger than the black. Um, I just am exaggerating the white. Things also will spread more as um, as we die. Oh dear, that is not good. What what clogged you? last thing I want is a big squirt. There we go. There we go. Got a nice little squirt. Oh dear. It's fine. It's fine. I haven't done hand painting with squirt bottles in a while. I've done a lot more with, um, like with foam brushes. I'm just sort of tapping this, which also just sort of helps move the color a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in, oh dear, sorry guys. Okay, Black, you can move over there. So I'm not blocking your view. Um, all right, so then I next wanted to do, yeah. 
I'm going to do rust here and then a tan. And I want to do this purple. And so this is going to come out a lot faster. So I'm going to start way further over than where I want it. Oh dear. So you can see how much easier. These are the same fiber. Now, granted, I don't know about the like lanolin content, but these are the same like Peruvian Highland wool and like it's easier to apply the color um, so far to the yarn. It sort of like soaks in a little bit better. And I am going to be planning on moving this color in closer. I'm just sort of laying out my vision, if that makes sense. I wish I could see the chat when I'm up here. Okay, and our blue. Mm -hmm. Actually, I had a thought. We'll see if I'm able to do it. There must be more water in there because that stayed a bit better. Yeah, I much prefer sort of like painting low immersion to hand painting. Um, but again, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty. Okay, the blue, yeah, Rebecca, remember the blue is one of the easiest colors to mix up of all these ones I did. So it's really just that one color. The nice thing about Wool of the Andes is that, um, Colors don't necessarily set super, super fast. So when you're applying the color, you have time to like move it through. Whereas with a super wash yarn, you can't always move it through in that same way. And that's actually not bad. Um, you can see like there's some color wicking um, that again, guar gum would totally help um, but let's go over here and bring you down a little bit on this side too. The one concern always with the roving is that like as you are sort of like helping color and whatnot through, you want to make sure that you don't um, felt it. But you can definitely still see there's some, like the color is not solid within here. Um, but I'm sort of excited with what's happening. I still need to move a little closer We can just do this a little bit at a time. Sorry, I'm not reading the chat. Okay. I'm actually really happy with what's happening here. Washing off my hands in between colors. Okay, let's go to the tip. Do our sand dune. This is again just a one straight one percent stock solution. 
everything else is diluted a fair amount, but the sand dune and the black, I didn't. Yeah, I will definitely be flipping this, but But it doesn't take a lot of time to realize that like with similar amounts of dye, just because there's more, I don't know, the, the colors roving, I feel like needs just like so much more dye to have colors look anywhere near as intense. Um, the purple is, is looking kind of brown, I think on camera. In person, it's sort of like an, a berry-ish color. Um, it's definitely not brown. Um, I'm not sure if like, yeah, it still looks brown on there. It's a red balance thing. And this, um, on my webcam, I have, I struggle to get reds to show up true. Okay. And now we've got our rust color. section Oops. stop burping stop burping okay the rust will probably break Ooh, some of that is like striking a little fast um, I think there are not as much liquid in here but let's go Room. Yeah, I'm liking overall the colors a lot better on uh, the right now, at least on the wool of the Andes than I am on the roving. Um, that's just me. And again, I'm going to go on the other side. I'm trying to make sure that I have enough left to adequately do that. I wonder, how are you? Yeah, I think that whatever gets spun out of this roving will be a lot more neutral. Uh, so some of these stripes are fairly intentional, but I think, I think I need to flip it. I think I want to flip and add color to the other side and then, and then think. I think the white is a little exaggerated, but I also know that without guar gum, I can't really make the white that much thinner. Oh, funny. I was like, there's white. And I'm like, no, Rebecca, some of that white is intentional. Some of that white is intentional. <laughs> For color penetration, though, this is not bad. Um, you can see, like, beyond where I've intentionally left white patches, there are white patches, but... Uh... Oh, that did not work as well as I'd hoped. <sighs> And then here, again, not horrible. Um, not horrible at all. Okay. Let's do. Some sand dune. I also struggle to remember that how much colors, not just with roving, but in general, colors lighten when they dry because I'm like, ooh, ooh, I want like, I like don't want it to be too dark, but then at the same time, it's like, oh wait, it'll be less pigmented uh, at the end.
So I'd love to hear what your favorite methods are for hand painting. I think, honestly, uh, I really wanted to squeeze bottle because I hadn't done that in a while, but I do really, really like using foam brushes. I like the control it gives me over the color, and I can go light or heavy. Um, yeah, that's something, oh, of course I made this spot. That's okay. Um, Oh, uh, yes, there's no duck right now, right? Oh, yep. Um, if someone is seeing the duck right now, it is definitely not up. Um, then you might just want to refresh because you might be on a big lag. DVR is enabled for the stream. Um, so then you can go, like, you don't have to be watching it up in real time. It's amazing how some of these colors are doing such a better job. Probably because some, like, just strike fast. Um, like, I don't think I'm going to go back in on the black. I think I'm really happy. And if I added more black, it would just spread out more. I know that the whites, I'd love to do this again with Gorgum when I can keep the whites, like, tiny. But for today, I'm exaggerating. And, yeah, we will probably lose more... We will probably lose more white. Um, there. I don't hate it. Oh dear. Probably not. I spilled. I squirted acid dyes on a favorite dress of mine the other day, and I think I got it out. I mean, the dress was mostly cotton. Um, I'm usually really good about not staining clothes, so it was like fluorescent yellow, too. Um, sort of a disaster. Uh, just going to double. No, oh, I think I'm fine. Um, I want to make sure I snap a picture of this. Um, and because people were curious, I will, although it's going to show up as, um, let's see how the white balance is going to do on my phone. Uh, I'm going to share this so you guys can see the colors. Also on my Instagram story, I am just at Chemnitz on Instagram. And that is shared just now. And I'm gonna come over here and I will pop up. Um, so you like to do with paintbrushes. Yeah, I, I started off with a combination of, of pouring. Here's our bird again. I started off back like ages ago with a combination of pouring and um, pouring and syringes, but the syringes were pretty slow going. So I prefer squeeze bottles. Um, okay, I'm actually kind of liking that. Um, the colors coming through on the stream are not true, and if it helps, uh, before I put my face back on, um, if it helps, So these are some of the colors. So here are the swatches of our colors that we created. Here are the crayons that are a pretty good match for the image. So the way it looks wet, the blue is really good. The purple is deeper than that purple, um, but it sort of brightens towards the edges and we get a little bit of sort of the bright blue where that's spreading. Black is black. The orange is definitely a bit browner than this rust. I think I should have used, um, I should have diluted the dye, which in this case, because we've been talking about how 
like over in the lab, how diluting your dye doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get less color when you're immersion dyeing. But with hand painting, if you dilute your dye and then apply the same amount of liquid to the same space, ultimately you'll have more, you'll have less dye that you apply to the yarn. So if I had created like double the volume in this container right here, um, I wouldn't have used all the volume to cover that space, but there would be less pigment, um, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I think that um, a bunch of these colors will brighten up as it dries. Oh, actually these swatches here now, these have dried when they were wet before. So this is, these are just crayons. These are the colors that I mixed and I'll hang on to this because I'm curious to see how all this compares to this once it is set and dry. Um, but, oh, yeah, I can see on the screen that like my purple absolutely looks brown and it's definitely not. Um, no, I want this. Hi guys, let's see. Um, oh, I'm glad. Um, I'm glad you like it. Uh, well, okay. I don't know. I've only used that, I think, from this, like, my swatch swatch. Um, I'm trying to remember. It might have been a bit yellow, but, yeah, I definitely had colors that, uh, that I could pull that I was like, ooh, this shade and maybe this shade would be a good, like, orange or, like, I have colors in my arsenal that would have been a good pre-mixed thing. I just wanted to see well in part because I didn't want to um mix dyes out tonight uh but in part also I was like okay it's sort of a challenge I've got colors already mixed that are close uh can I hit what I'm looking for with what I have already mixed up um there are a lot of dyers out there that will just get uh you know maybe six to eight colors total so maybe two sets of each of the prim primaries like warm tone um, primaries and cool tone. Some people will do like the more like cyan, magenta, yellow, um, but then there are also reasons to have a true red and like a true blue because those can be harder to like mix and same thing with the black. But outside of that then all of a sudden you can really mix just about anything. Um, yeah, I, I like that pop of blue, but also like I feel like in my little duck friend the blue to me really pops um in like i feel like there's a brightness on some of the other colors that i'm missing but i think that like i still hit something and it would be fun to play with these shades and since i wrote down my recipe i could remix these colors and then even play around with them low immersion um and whatnot with low immersion, it would definitely be harder to intentionally leave some white, but although um, resist techniques might help. Uh, like I'm always torn with leaving white behind. I sometimes like really don't like to, and I definitely could fill in those white sections because white is not a big part of this picture, but those stripes were something that drew me and I really should have if the kids weren't having trouble going to sleep, then maybe we would have had some for them. Uh, <laughs> but actually, I don't, I haven't used guar gum on roving yet, and I'm a little nervous about having to wash that out. There's always things to consider. The next step for this is that, and I'll probably do the jelly roll before, uh, I may not do it before I sign off. Um, I don't yet have my steamer basket set up. I need to do that. Um, maybe I'll do that in a moment. Um, the duck should have a name. <laughs> the duck is gorgeous. Uh, yes, thank, thank you. I'm glad that you guys are liking this. And I wish um, I wish I could get the colors more true in the um, in the stream itself. Um, actually. That was not someone's, I saw something, I was like, what? Someone wrote that to me? And nope, that was just like a, a tweet that popped up in my, um, 
in my thing. Um, yeah, I feel like the colors in my picture still aren't quite... Hmm. It's not perfect, but I'm not mad at it. Uh, that's the thing with like these dialogues. I find it a real challenge for myself because I think I can create some colors that are pretty, but when it comes to trying to pick colors that evoke a feeling, that's something that I don't necessarily consider it something that's like, ooh, that's my strength. My strength is my willing to go, willingness to go for it and to try new things on camera. <laughs> that's my strength. Uh, but I still have a lot to learn and I definitely make mistakes and I enjoy sharing this with all of you because as I make mistakes, I learn something as well. Um, just like, you know, things when I'm like, oh, this color would be good. Nah, it'll be fine. Or, oh, you should do Gorgon. Nah, it'll be fine. Um, I am really, really excited though to see the roving next to the yarn from the same like company and fiber type. I think that that'll be a really fun comparison. And yeah. <laughs> oh, Kenny, I love that you guys are naming the duck. Um, you guys are awesome. <laughs> um, uh, can we get a live spinning video between now and October 15th? I'm not sure. Uh, my, my schedule is fairly, well, it's not like written in stone yet, but I'm fairly, I've got a pretty booked filming and editing schedule between now and mid-November when I'm going to start wrapping up the Hanukkah samplers. Uh, not just for the Hanukkah special, but also I, um, yeah, I have that uh, collaboration with Dyer Supplier coming up, and so I still have things that I have. Uh, so, like, I guess I've finished, like, parts like, one and two. Wait. Ooh, wait. Okay, yeah, and so I have other deadlines and stuff to hit. Um, ideally, I would love to have some live spinning time. Um, I've just, the times when I've had like a chunk of time where in theory I could do that, I found myself like editing or doing something else. Um, which, yeah, the editing is uh, my rate limiting step by far. <laughs> um, uh, so there's a question, how's Lucas doing in kindergarten? He is doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, it is an adjustment. Uh, bedtime routines have been troublesome and Keith is a little hero tonight for um, doing everything to keep um, them, well, not just like screaming and running up and down the hallway, um, you know, as, as kids do when they do not want to go to bed. He has kept them calm and quiet and I really appreciate that. Um, it's hard when like you work out of your home and then when the kids aren't going to bed easily and yeah there's a moment when I was like well I might have to delay things and blame it on the kids because it's the kids fault <laughs> but I know so many of you are parents and that you or have family members with young children and so there's some understanding there um, uh, so there's a question is YouTube my main job yes um, or at, yes, I, it's funny. I've been doing this for a while. I started the blog over 10 years ago and I guess I've technically been on YouTube, I think since 2010, but I, it's only been almost two years since I like full in, went in like as a full time, regular twice a week kind of commitment thing. Actually, I think, I don't remember if it's the 17th or the 18th, but the anniversary of launching my Kickstarter is coming up really soon. Um, and so, yeah, that's when I decided to like lean into this as like, it's always sort of been like a hobby slash business, but then yeah, really trying to go for it. <laughs> um, yes, the, 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 the photo of the duck is a male. The female Mandarin ducks are, um, still gorgeous. They are just definitely less uh, vibrant uh, in their color choices. Um, yes, that's the one thing, nice thing about the live streams is that they, the replays are available. Um, and one, it's another big reason why I like to try to do recaps 
for the live streams in parts. So that way you can see the finished dry yarn. But then you can watch the recap and then figure out if you want to go back and watch the live stream. <laughs> Um, I know some people will watch me on double time. <laughs> um, uh, Carol, yes, that video is coming out soon. The yarn is actually in my Etsy shop right now. So um, let me check and uh, it would say the date in there. Um, nope, I do not want to go into the Etsy app, because that will not actually give me the information I want. Okay, so tell me, learn more about this item. That video will come out on October 4th, Carol. Um, so that's, and I actually still have more leftover powders from that video, um, from the, like, when I did speckling with mix, mixing acid dyes with sugar, salt, and citric acid. I still have some leftovers uh, <laughs> from that, but the the yarn the yarn that you're talking about uh, that video will be up on October fourth, um, and so that's edited and ready to go. And this is the oh that thanks thanks computer or phone. This is the yarn that we're talking about. <laughs> Um, yeah, spoiler, sorry, I should have given a warning so people could look away. Um, but the, the video with the salt, sugar, and citric acid, that one's out already. Um, and I have shared that yarn on my Instagram before. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry for the spoilers. Um, sampler add-on question. Are they truly different colorways? Um, no, uh, yeah, Beth, the, the two um, add-ons for the Chemnitz Hanukkah Special, um, they're gonna be two different colorways. So one will be a sparkle, um, one colorway will be on a sparkle yarn base that'll have either a Stellina or Lurex in it. Um, I'm finalizing the, the base on that soon. Um, and then the non-sparkle base will have another, a completely different colorway. Um, so they won't be, yeah, it's not going to be the same colorway, but one has still has sparkle and the other one doesn't. Um, so there are, in addition to the sampler, you can get, so the full eight night sampler comes with 100 grams of yarn and mini skeins, but you can also add on uh, as well, really as many as are available, full 100 gram skeins of yarn. Um, to your sampler. Uh, and in addition to the full size sampler, there are half size samplers available. So you can get a four night sampler that comes with 40 grams of yarn. Um, and I did that to try to provide a sampler at a lower price point as well, um, just you know, to make it a little, a little more accessible. Um, but you can add on the full skeins to either size sampler. So that is an option. Uh, yeah, Carol, I thought, I thought it was going to be in September and then I forget it, it ended up fitting in the schedule in October. Um, cause I just edited it. Sometimes things get shifted. Now I'm curious. I think, I forget what prompt it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to see this from now. I'm not even logged in. Gosh, it's, no, I'm definitely not logged in, so I can't even check that right now. Um, yeah, the, until the video is edited, then sometimes there's still some flux in the schedule. Usually, usually I'm like two months ahead with where videos are. Uh, right now I'm about one month ahead, maybe. Uh, not quite. I still have to, um, there's a bunch of stuff to edit that's ready to go for most of October. Um, but I still like have some other things that I need to film and figure out for that. Um, in August tends to be a low filming month. Um, 
Oh, funny. That's really awesome. Um, <laughs> oh, Beth, thank you. <laughs> oh. Um, so, oh, so the ones that I'm doing right here, these aren't sparkly. The, the questions were about the um, Chemnitz Hanukkah yarns. Um, up here, I've got 100% Peruvian Highland wool in worsted weight yarn and in roving. Um, and so that's what's on the counter behind me. But, whew, I've been up since five. And yeah, I, when, when I decided to get up at five and like get, when I decided to do that, I think I forgot that I was gonna live stream <laughs> Oh, real talk. I'm I'm a really poor sleeper. Um, I mean, last night I went to bed at like 8.30. So, <laughs> oh man. Um, so the, the weight of the, um, the weight of the yarn over here um, that I did today, there's worsted weight yarn and then the roving. I, I don't know what that'll become. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna spin it myself or if it would end up in the shop. We'll see how like the, the what I think of the quality when it comes out. Um, for the Hanukkah sampler, the two bonus skeins are fingering weight. Um, but anyway, okay, I am gonna go start setting up my steamer basket. But I, yeah, feel free to drop more questions in the chat because I will be popping back over the check. Oh my goodness. Oh, you guys want a funny story? I forgot how old I was this week. Yep. The kid asked me how old I was. And I was like, oh, we're 36. <laughs> and then he's like, Rebecca, we're 35. And I was like, no, we're 36. He's like, no, it's 2019. And I was like, oh. In like my like thinking about how old I would be like this is does this happen like this is the first time this has happened to me where I legit have forgot how old I was <laughs> oh. to be fair right now a lot of our friends like a lot of my friends are older but yeah, somehow, like, and I also should have known because Lucas was born when I was uh, 29. So, uh, wait, oh, but I turned 30 like two months after he was born. So, okay, I'm setting up my steamer basket. Which actually will be ready to go really soon. It doesn't take that long for things to get nice and steamy. I do want to let it get. That's the bigger one. Um, I do want to let it get hot before I add the yarn. But I'll show you guys the rolling up of this. Oof. Come back down. Okay. Um. <laughs> He's surprised I have any spins to get. Well, you know, I can run on. I the, the thing about like knitting and yarn dyeing is that it's like one step at a time. I am a little bit on fumes right now, um, but I also know that um, like. So on Tuesdays, Lucas has kindergarten for just the mornings. Um, actually, all elementary school here is half day in the mornings. But then, uh, yeah, and so like I have, tomorrow it's fairly light. Um, but then I have to, I just have to, a lot of editing to do. A lot of editing to do. And then uh, once like, I've been doing like some talking head type things more, which I haven't started incorporating it into like my own channel videos as much, but yeah, seeing like how that goes, I might try to do like more of my conclusions and thoughts and rambling in front of the camera 
versus like being behind the camera and just seeing a picture of the yarn. So that's something I'm considering trying more in the future. It just takes a bit more planning um, because I have to make sure that like I'm like wearing something I'm comfortable being in front of the camera in. Which like, I mean, I'll come in front of camera in my Hanukkah jams. Like, that's not an issue. It's more of just like, am I wearing like my scrubby and like ugly, like dying clothes or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, once I'm 25, I stop aging, so I'm still 25. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I like, I, I, uh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, then part of me like, okay, so I'm at the supermarket and I was buying, um, uh, you know, it's pumpkin season, pumpkin spice season, right? So I was getting some like blue moon pumpkin beer. Uh, and like, you know, I give the register my idea and I, like, I was almost going to like tell the story to the cashier how I forgot. And I'm like, I really don't want to make it look like this is not my actual ID, even though I am clearly over 30. Um, <laughs> oh man. So, so I was like, so I bit my tongue to not share the like, I forgot how old I was yesterday. <laughs> Um, did I ever figure out why I got holes with the steamer basket? Nope. Um, like the Clorox wipes since then, like I've confirmed that they don't have bleach and I don't know. I used the, it was the pasta insert versus the steamer basket I use more often. I suppose it's possible. Like some of the yarn was sort of like pushed through the hole and maybe it got wet and some of the dye came off, but there wasn't really dye underneath. Like, I don't have an answer for what happened there and why that happened. Because it only happened to the green one. It didn't happen to the other three colors in the pot. I didn't see any green transfer onto the other colors. So, yeah, I, I don't know what happened. It was just a, you know, there were some suggestions that, like, oh, could it be oils or look like fingerprints? Which are definitely possible. But I've never seen, like, fingerprint spots on any of my yarn before and I don't tend to scour the yarn like wash it with soap before dyeing so yeah so I don't know the the holes in the basket are my best guess because that's what they look like in sort of the position and regularity but it could have been a defect in the yarn it could be oil there's many things it could be um the only like happy accident is I really like the colorway that I ended up with when I tried crafting it um, I do wish, sort of wish that I'd gone, that I'd tried like just spot fixing um, with a little bit more of green dye. And so maybe I need to intentionally leave some white spots on some yarn, like add like a resist so that way I have to go back and try to fix it. So that's on my uh, list of video ideas now. <laughs> um. <laughs> You know, with coffee and your kids love to sit of water. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. We were at the playground yesterday, and, like, we left our water bottles at home. And we were, I mean, we were close to home. I'm going to go, like, so it wasn't an issue. But Lucas was like, I'm really thirsty. And I was like, well, I've got soda in the car. I don't really want to give you caffeine, but that's the only liquid I have. And so instead, we just went to dinner. Um... Oh, I'm glad that you guys like the yarn. Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a thing, like, so when I'm dying, the times I get the most disappointed with the yarn that I'm dying, and I'm going to just make myself bigger because I'm feeling really tiny. Um, okay. So the times I get the most disappointed are when I have a real concrete vision and there's a yarn very specifically in my head that I want to create and then it, I don't hit it or it comes out like not quite being there that's when I feel the most disappointed if I go into something being like okay I want to combine these things and see what's going to happen I can be really excited about the result whether or not it's something I would want to knit with the like I wonder what will happen if makes it really easy to be excited with the result. It's the like, okay, I have this vision. Oh, I didn't quite hit it. Like that, that's harder for me. 
Um, which is why, actually, these dialogues, which were something that you guys had requested, uh, are a really good challenge for me because, like, it forces me to, like, really think about, like, color combination and things like that. Um, yeah, the yarn with the navy speckles ended up really, really nice. And uh, that actually was, was um, should be en route to a wonderful, uh, wonderful person right now. Um, yeah, that, that shipped out this morning. Uh, and I had my little uh, three-year-old helper at the post office who was really adorable and really entertained everybody in line. But, oh, Carol, thank you so much for the super chat, Carol Cochran. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, oh, Austin, I did a pumpkin-inspired colorway last September. It was right before I officially started the Chemnitz Dialogue. Um, but if you search my channel for the pumpkin tree, um, that if you just search for pumpkin tree Chemnitz, it should come up. Um, I like to grow, like, mini pumpkins on a trellis. Um, and so I took a bunch of these like different mini pumpkins I had and some of the leaves from my um, after a harvest and I brought them in and I did a colorway inspired by that last fall, um, which was awesome and really, really fun. Um, <laughs> wait, I will, something disappeared. But anyway. Um, oh, right, I wanted to show you guys me rolling up the yarn. Uh, I'm going to pop my head away. Because speaking of pumpkins, oh, wait, I missed something. Wait, a new addition to the family. I think I'm not getting all the chat. I think, um, hmm. Again and do it in addition to I'm definitely missing some things. Sorry, guys. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up as I hobble like my old knot. Uh, <laughs> my old not 36 year old self. <laughs> Can't believe I did. I like, I, I still am like, oh dear. I'm totally going to get dial over my hands. But I don't want to waste a pair of gloves just to do this. Okay. Uh, wrapping up. So we've got the yarn and the roving. And oh, actually, there. Yeah, basket, I hear you. The jelly roll. Okay. And now I'm going to try not to squish it too much, but it will inevitably get squished by going into the steamer basket. All right, I forgot that I can't go to bed. <laughs> I don't want to steam it for 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. I was like, la la la, I'm gonna leave a mess and clean it up in the morning. But I was like, oh, I have to wait for the, the turn off the stove. It's not the worst problem I've ever had. Okay, move that there. And I'll come back down. Ugh. It looks so pretty up there, actually. Ha ha, there we go. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am turning into a cornball, guys. I need a haircut. Um, but yes, okay, so I saw a new addition to the family, a little girl. Congratulations on the baby girl. Eek. Um, pie inspired colorway would be really fun. Uh, yeah, what I was working on. When I was pregnant with Lucas, um, like right up at the end, I still had like probably like over two and a half weeks, a shy of three weeks. And I'm like, 
Oh yeah, I'll totally join this test knit for a baby sweater. It was something with like a super bulky yarn. It was gonna be a really, really fast knit. And I was like, yeah, I'll make the newborn size because it's gonna have a newborn. Well, I think I had just barely cast on and I went into labor. <laughs> and so like I'm work I'm like early labor and I'm like working on it. And then I couldn't work on it anymore. And that's when it's like, okay, fine. I'm uncomfortable now. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, so yeah, that was before he came before our sweater was finished. Uh, actually, both the kids were like three weeks early, um, but Ryder was huge. Well, not, I mean, he would have been huge if he wasn't early, um, but yeah, the congratulations. Little babies are so fun to knit for, um, so fun. I'm not wanting to move my head because I'm blocking part of my crayons and I like my crayons. Uh, but yeah, I do love your suggestions of things to like pick for like inspiration photos. So like pie is a good suggestion. Um, there were some nice like waterfall and fall waterfall suggestions. I actually might have, I've turned down the heat a little bit. Um, I might have some colorways already picked for next month. I've got some stuff that felt I almost picked for this month, but it felt too similar to, yeah, it felt slightly too similar to something I'd done recently. And so I decided to, uh, ship to like, I was like, okay, I need to go through my like Pinterest. I have like a whole board of photos that I pull that I look at. And I'm like, Ooh, I see yarn. <laughs> um, Idea, any ideas of colors for dyes for Frozen colors? Um, like Frozen the movie or Frozen as in ice? Because uh, the Dharma acid dye color Frozen is like a beautiful bright blue. Is that too bright? Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful bright blue, blue that I think is a very good uh, starting place for um, something that is Frozen the movie inspired. Um, as for ice, I did a glacier colorway once and I used like teals, which was really fun. Um, that was, goodness, I think, was that, maybe, was that a Dye Pop PS? That might have been a Dye Pop PS. Maybe I, or like, for some reason I needed to do something wintry. And I wanted to pick something that was like wintry, but I didn't want to go like, like Christmas, you know? Um, so one thing too is colors can look less bright on non superwash than superwash. Yes. So I do always love to do a good old like non superwash yarn versus superwash comparison. One of the reasons why colors look brighter on superwash yarns is that since they strike faster, they don't spread out as much. So I feel like with a lot of the yarns I use, if I were, I, I mean, maybe I should do this just to like see. Um, but if I were to take like Wool of the Andes and Wool of the Andes Superwash, and I were to in two separate pots dye like a 1% DOS, the colors I think would be pretty similar. But the difference is like if you put them in the pot together, the Superwash is gonna pull more color. Um, and so, or if you're doing low immersion, the colors tend to spread out more on the non superwash yarns than they do on the superwash. So you get sharper, brighter colors on the superwash than you do on the non. Um, but I mean, I could also do low. <laughs> but that's one big reason that like makes sense to me with why the colors look different. Um, so yeah, the movie. So Dharma Frozen is a great color. The, the swatch makes it look like a less bright blue, but if you go and look at Dye Pot Weekly 100, that is the color, that's a bright blue I used in that self-striping yarn, and I love it. It's one of my favorite blues. Like, it's almost, like speckles, almost neon. Like, it's, like, feels like a great, I, yeah. <laughs> Um, but then it also dilute could be like toned down to like a true like icy blue color. Um, mm, chrysanthemums. Yeah, I have a lot of like flower pictures and um, we had praying mantises in my garden the other day. There were two praying mantises and 
we did not yet get to see if like they were going to mate and then pray if the praying mantises would do what praying mantises do uh <laughs> so yeah we did not we did not see that but it was pretty cool i got some cool photos of those too it's funny like i love my dslr i mean i use that to shoot all of my cabinets videos and stuff but the cameras on our cell phones these days are pretty darn good and so I honestly find myself reaching for the other camera last. Um, and so I thought that was pretty. Uh, yeah, fantasy picture that's not copyrighted. Yeah, it's hard, like, because technically, like, some, I feel like some of the stuff, like, counts as, like, fair use. It, it's hard. It's hard to know. So there's some sites where, like, I've been going and, like, pulling photos. It, it's hard because there's sometimes, like, there's photos that I find and it's hard to find the source. And I try really hard to find the source. Um, but I mostly go to like royalty free stock photo sites um, is, or photos I take myself and, um, and stuff like that. So, but I try to like this, in this one I couldn't find a credit for a name and I didn't reverse image search this one actually. But um, so I just like, because I'm sure that even on these like royalty free sites, there could pop, people could probably put up pictures that they don't actually like have the rights to. Cause uh, yeah. And I think it just gets complicated. Um, uh, but by start answer, you are right. <laughs> um, oh, have fun with your math. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Um, thank you, Austin. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, but yeah, I think that I will be, even though I've still got some fair amount of time on my timer, I'm probably going to head out myself. Um, yeah, I forget. Oh, I forget if I was like going to film film tomorrow or edit. Oh, I know I need to film video ends. I have like a whole like, like I have a bucket of yarn that like is finally dry and you go film conclusions and then I have a bucket of yarn that's like, okay, everything's filmed, but nothing's been edited yet. And then I have a separate bag of yarn where it's like, okay, editing and uploading is in progress. This can go into the shop. <laughs> I have this like whole like, yarn is everywhere. Everywhere. Um, can you guys tell <laughs> I'm a giggly person anyway, and I know it's so ironic that I have a fatigue disorder because, like, I'm so, like, bubbly, I guess. But, um, yeah, I've, I've gotten really good at, like, disconnecting. Like, I can sort of disconnect from myself in a way that, like, allows me to function in as long as, like, don't ask me to, like, order dinner or something. I wouldn't be able to do that. But... Uh, yeah, if I have like a plan, I can follow it. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. These streams are, oh, I should like swear at the end of the thumbnail. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, I don't need a thumbnail for this one. It's only been as the inspiration photo. Anyway, I'm just being a ham. Um, yeah, I'm going to head out. Uh, wait for the yarn to finish setting and then I will be leaving it in the pot just overnight like once it's done steaming I'm just going to turn off the heat and leave it be and then in the morning I will wash it um, and oh maybe I'll film for the recap for like the at least the unwrapping maybe not the washing it's kind of like a, a nice little like relief when I'm not showing washing uh, <laughs> oh I'm so glad that you guys enjoy it I I love what I do and I love being able to have this opportunity and so you guys watching and tuning in is honestly the biggest way that you guys can support everything I do. Um, everything else helps a ton like the shop and uh, the Patreon and all that stuff is also so helpful and means so much to me that so many of you guys support um, and want to contribute to the content that I'm creating but the biggest thing is like that people tune in and watch like that's a big deal and I really really appreciate that and I hope you all know that from the bottom of my heart um, I am grateful that you guys are letting me play with color for my job so thank you <laughs> um, 
So awesome. Okay, I realize I need to pull up the video so that I can. Oh, how am I gonna stop it? Hmm. I didn't think this through. <laughs> Aha! It's pulling up the window. I was like, I don't know how to stop it without. Wait, why does it say start streaming? Am I still streaming? No, no, okay. Why did it start the time over again? Uh, oh, what? Okay. <laughs> Cause I had closed, I just left the chat open and I had closed the like live control room and that's where I need to go and press the stop streaming button. So I was like, oh no. <laughs> Um, all right, but yes, I'm now going to make my face go away so then I can wait and see that come through on the stream so I know when to stop everything. But thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and there'll be a new video tomorrow morning. A uh, new episode of Dead Pot Weekly that I hope you guys will really enjoy. So I will catch you guys soon. Bye, everyone. Do, do, do. Sometimes some of this ends up in, but you know. Now I'm like vamping and doing my wacky arm dance, but you guys can't see because I don't have the camera on me. Oh wait, but I should be watching the preview so I know when to turn it off. So then you're not hearing me babble, talk to myself. There's a bit of a delay. Oh my gosh, you guys look at that. All right, there we go. And good night.